Hi, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another Morgan James book launch. My name is Jim Howard. I'm the publisher for Morgan James. And today I'm excited because we have an amazing author to introduce you to, Fred Dodini. And Fred is the author of Shine Brighter, Choosing a Life of Greater Clarity, Purpose, and Joy. Fred, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, it's great to be with you, Jim. Uh, I am excited to be here. I love this book. Uh, it turned out so well, but the message is so deep and, and clear. And um, so I wanted to kind of jump into, because one of the things that comes up is, you know, how does looking up at the sky and pondering what we see there, how does that answer life's most important question? You know, um, I, I pondered this a lot. Um, I was the clinical director for a, a wilderness program in Arizona for several years back in the early 2000s. So we're taking a bunch of teenagers and you know young adults that are struggling in life to make good decisions hmm. out in nature, out in the wild, where they learn to survive in nature. So it's a good place to be a little more contemplative, think about life a little bit deeper. So to sit on a creek bed out, up on a mountainside and talk to teenagers about life, um, I just began to notice we would always look for metaphors from nature that we could use to connect with these kids and give them something to help them make good choices. And so I, there were several times I remember just sitting with these kids and saying, you know, there's, uh, there's three kinds of people in the world. Well, yeah. what, what do you mean? Uh, sun people, moon people, and star people. And I just say, look up. What do you see? The sun. But I can't look right at it, man. It'll burn my eyes out. Okay. So, but you know it's there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do we know about the sun? Well, we talk about it. It provides light, warmth. Nutrition, vitamin D comes from sunlight. Uh, sunlight's necessary for plants to grow, so we have food. It's necessary for photosynthesis, so we have oxygen to breathe. And, and the sun uses its gravitational mass, its force, its power to keep the earth in a beneficial relationship to mm -hmm. the sun. So the sun provides light, warmth, nutrition, and positive influence. I said, sun people do the same thing. They provide light in the form of knowledge, wisdom, insight, understanding. They provide warmth in the form of love and compassion. They provide nutrition in the form of service to body, mind, and spirit. And they use their positions in life, their power, their knowledge, their wealth, their positions of authority to influence other people's lives for good. So the sun, really, when you think about it, serves the earth, mm. not the other way around. How often do we see that in life where the strongest, the most gifted, the most intelligent dedicate their lives in service to the weakest and most vulnerable? We don't see that very much, do we? No. But when you do, you know that's a sun person. And I'd ask these kids, do you know any sun people? And they usually would, yeah. And they say, what about the moon? What does the moon do? Does it produce its own light? No, it doesn't. Just what is reflected from the sun. And throughout the month, as the Earth and the Moon rotate, we see that one lit side of the Moon from different angles, right? So it goes through the phases. And so it goes from a full Moon down to a crescent and then sometimes to a new Moon, which is totally blocked out. So the Moon is always half in the light, half in the dark. There's one side facing the Sun and one side that doesn't. Well, then during the lunar eclipse, that whole process of waxing and waning happens in a matter of minutes. Starts as a full moon, right, in the night sky, then it starts to shrink and get smaller. Then it becomes what they call a blood moon, where it's totally blocked out except for a ring of red light that you can see coming from around it. And then it begins to, to wax and, and relight, and it's back to a full moon. It takes maybe a couple hours at the most. So I'd ask these kids, what causes that to happen? What causes the moon to suddenly shrink and then light up again? Oh, the earth gets in the way. Yeah, the earth rotates between the sun and the moon, blocks the light of the sun from reaching the moon. Wow, what a great metaphor. Moon people let the world get in the way. Mm. They focus too much of their time and energy and resources on temporal things. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, temporal concerns are trivial. They're not. They're significant. They're, they're important. But if we spend too much of our time and energy focused only on those, we overlook the bigger things of life, the deeper questions. You know, who am I? Why am I? If we're, if we're not paying attention, we can live our lives without ever looking for answers to those questions. But the universe provides these metaphorical reminders every single day, 24 hours a day. 
And so I'd ask them, do you know any moon people? Oh yeah, they knew moon people. And most of the times they thought they were a moon they person a moon. too, right? A little too caught up in popularity and yeah. prestige and looking good and all that. And I say, what about the stars? Well, stars are just a tiny speck of light in a, in a sea of darkness. If you took the moon and, and all the other stars in the night sky out and just left one star, even the North Star, there wouldn't be enough light to see your hand in front of your face. So I tell them, star people are the same way. I think everybody comes into this life with some measure of light, some measure of goodness within them, some more than others, obviously. But star people have chosen darkness over light. Um, so they don't like sun people. <laughs> and star people are not fun to be around. They're, they're violent, they're dishonest, they, they're, they're just not very good people. And um, people who are you know, committed sun people, star people, I should say, um, have chosen that way. Mm. So I, and I asked the kids, do you know any star people? Oh yeah, oh yeah, don't wanna be around them, okay. So those are your choices in life. You can be a sun person, a moon person, or a star person. What one do you think is going to bring you the most happiness, the most satisfaction, the most fulfillment in life? And I would leave them with that question, sitting on along a creek bank in the middle of nowhere. And I would usually say as I left, you know, from now on, for the rest of your life, every time you look up, you're going to remember this conversation. Mm. One kid said, Dude, you're like totally in my head now, bummer. <laughs> I say, hey, kind of hope that would be the case. <laughs> so, um, so that was how it, you know, really began to kind of take shape was just paying attention to what the natural world provides in the ways of clues to figure out life's most important questions. Mm. You know, and, and what a powerful way to connect with everybody, but especially young people. You know, young people oh, yeah. are they connect with metaphors so well, especially when you can introduce them to a thought that, that can, they can hang on, right? And they can see and they can understand the, the reference and, and the way it, it plays out into life. And, and that's an amazing tool to utilize. So when did this whole idea really just begin to gel with you and take shape? You know, when I was in graduate school, um, got my doctorate in marriage and family therapy, and I was you have to write a, a theory of change. And I just began to look at some of the examples. There was a study most people know about, they call it the marshmallow study. It was done with four and five-year-olds at Stanford University at a, at a preschool there um, back in the early 70s. And, you know, and it was the, the, Walter Michel was the, was the psychologist. And he was studying kids' ability to delay gratification. Mm. And if you know the study, he would give them an opportunity to have a treat. And, and the researchers would say, if you wait till I come back in 15 minutes, I'll give you two. And then they'd wait to see, you know, how many of the kids could wait. Well, they fell into three groups. And you see the number three often in a lot of areas. In most, a lot of the world's religions, they have the tendency to break, you know, people up into one of three categories. Based on our choices here, that determines what happens hereafter. And so I just began to think of that, you know, that, that three, and, um, and then that's when the sun, the moon, the star idea kind of came was um, just because that, those are metaphors used a lot um, in, in scripture, but also just in, in, in daily life for people. So, so that was when I started kind of germinating the idea. And it was really while I was at that wilderness program that really began to, to, to gel and take shape. And it was then that I also began to expand the idea. Well, Okay, if there's three kinds of individuals in the world, sun, moon, and star, that means there's also three kinds of spouses, three kinds of parents, three kinds of citizens in the community. So that's when I began to expand it and apply it. And that's what the book is about. I take the sun, moon, and star metaphor and give examples of, of really, I'm focused on how to be a sun person. That's obviously the goal sure. here. Um, but I give examples of all three as individuals as spouses, as parents, and as citizens in the community. Because our lives really lived in that collective, you know, those different roles and responsibilities that we have. So that's really when the book began to take shape and I started doing research in all those areas. And when you think about it, um, at least from my perspective, as a family therapist, as a relationship coach, as a family life educator, obviously my emphasis is on family relationships. But, but really, when you think about it, our, our roles as, as spouses and parents really have significant, long-lasting impact in society. And, and in today's world, 
a lot of people get a little too caught up in in the temporal things and let the world get in the way kind of thing and and they sometimes we don't remember that um well it's been said that no other success in life can compensate for failure in our homes mm -hmm. and right now the home is not the focus of our efforts to stabilize society you stabilize the home you make family relationships good and solid and productive um it'll it'll spread to all of society so the problems in society we see are oftentimes reflections of problems in the home wow wow so the book and the message really just kind of takes shapes in in all areas of life to be honest and when you look at at what's happening today um, and maybe it's media attention that, that it's so much on the forefront, but just the, yeah. the unrest with the pandemic, the unrest with social oh, yeah. justice, the unrest that we see with, with racial issues. You know, when you look at that, you start to see there are a lot of moon people that are just letting the things of this yeah. world just get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, especially for kids. I mean, I, I still see a lot of, uh, young adults, teenagers, adolescents, young couples in my, in my practice. And they are so confused. Um, and it's, the world is getting more and more contentious and more divisive. And, um, and they are, they're, they're searching for anything they can hold on to that gives them some kind of anchor, some kind of foundation from which to see themselves and, and make decisions in their lives. So yeah, that, that's part of what I think really motivated me to write this book is, is I, I feel a lot, not just for my clients, but for my family, yeah. for my kids, my grandkids, my, you know, my posterity. I, I was hoping to leave something that would help them kind of navigate through, through, through life uh, as well, so. Wow. Well, I think you certainly did that. This book is so well done. The message is very clear in the way you lay it out. Um, and it applies to everyone. And I think that that's one of the, it's, it's always interesting when you, when you look at a book or you look at a messaging or a product of any kind and you say, who's the target market and you, you want to say everyone, right? Yeah. But this book really does have such a large readership potential. I mean, I think I people out there watching, as you heard Fred say, parents, uh, young people, adults, uh, everyone who's looking for an answer to just kind of put things into a perspective that you can understand and that you can start to apply to your own personal life and see how that impacts the lives around you. That's, that's where this book is. So if you're watching this today, I mean, you have to pick up a copy of this book. It's available everywhere. So you can get it anywhere books are found in physical book or electronic book. Um, so I hope that you guys do that. This is a powerful, powerful message. And Fred, you've done really well uh, articulating that to us today. Well, thank you. And I know it's even deeper in the book itself. So, Yeah, it, it goes in quite a bit of depth in, in all those areas, hopefully, that people uh, will find something that relates to them, um, some more than others. But I think there's something for everybody. That, that Those metaphors just apply universally, I think, mm. with, with all of us. So. Beautiful. So if people are watching today, um, and they, you know, we piqued their interest. I'm sure we have, uh, they want to connect and, and find out more. What's the best way for them to connect with you? You know, um, the email address is, is in the book. It's, there are three with the number three kinds of people. So there are three kinds of people at, at gmail.com, which is interesting when you think about it. <laughs> uh, so um, my website is, is Dr. Dodini, drdodini.com. Um, we're in the process of kind of, of redoing that. So that, that should be another way to reach me. But certainly that email address um, is uh, pretty reliable. So that's, that's a good way. Outstanding, outstanding. Do you have a copy of the book so you can show? I, the, I do, yeah, yeah, I don't go anywhere without it. No, just kidding. Beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful book. It turned out really well. Yeah. So I proud. love the cover. Yeah, it, it really, <laughs> it really pops. So, uh, and I've gotten, I mean, I share this concept with a lot of my clients and I do a lot of public speaking to various groups and, and I just got a, a tremendously good response from it every time. So I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to bring the ideas to more people. Uh, outstanding. Well, we are as well. So thank you, uh, Fred, for taking the time to talk with us today. And more importantly, for putting this book together and sharing your knowledge and insight to help others on their journey, especially during times like this, which can seem overwhelming and difficult. But we know 
if we just look at life in the right perspective, then we know we're going to move in a positive direction. So thank you for that. You bet. And really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, thank you guys for watching as well. Uh, you can connect with Fred uh, Dodini uh, on his uh, email address that he provided. It'll be listed right below this video, so I'll make it easy for you. Uh, but I, I would encourage you to get a copy of this book, read it and apply it and connect with Fred um, to see how you can figure out, are you a star, are you a moon, or you're a sun person and strive to be that bright light. Drive to be brighter. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Fred. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll look to see you on our next one. Thank you.